morning everyone it's good to be with you again this morning so I just want to open this session this morning and just welcome the Holy Spirit we give him the airwaves we give him the atmosphere we dedicate this time to listen and we thought, ask you Lord we ask you for an open heart open spirit open our eyes open our ears so that we can truly hear what your word is speaking to us this morning. So I welcome you. And as, um, as we carry on with this journey into holiness. It is, it is a thing sometimes that gets frowned upon. Where, where people almost make make us feel like they make us feel like we're not enough um, because of the way that they have to strive to live holier lives and um, <clears throat> I realized that is that is a that is a lie that is the devil it is that place in us that belief system in us that makes us feel unworthy and there is always something in the whispering in our ears telling us we're not enough. So we all we all are on a journey. I've said this before. So some just started into the faith, some just gave their heart to God and they're just still learning. Others have moved further onto it. Others have given their life to God years ago, but have since then gone off the path. But there is no condemnation. Point is what we do today. So choose today. God, I want to know more. I want to know what it is to live a life with you. I want to know what it is to be holy. Because you asked me to be holy. So the scripture I want to go into this morning is in Romans 12, verse 1 and verse 2. This is specifically is read out of the Amplified. Now I'm not, I'm not a person that prefers one to the other. I believe all the Bibles, all the translations, I believe the Holy Spirit was present in all of them. And there is some beautiful ones there and it really helps me when there's a scripture that really stands out, really touches my heart, or that I really just don't understand. It helps me to then get all my translations out and just read them all in different, from different point of views. Um, the Amplified specifically, I, I do prefer, um, in, in a sense that it gives you that little bit of extra um, information that they put in brackets that goes more into the explanation of the Hebrew and Greek language, um, just a fuller understanding of their text. Um, so yeah, I read it quite often. I also enjoy the Passion Translation. Um, it's just a beautiful translation to me. And then most of my reading is New, um, New King James or NIV. So. So really don't get stuck on a Bible because someone said this is the closest to the Word of God. The Holy Spirit is there to reveal the Word of God to you. It is a spiritual book. It's not a natural book. It's what the Spirit wants to reveal to you. So don't let, don't let things like that come in your way. Try it all. If It says the Word was God and the Word was with God and the Word was made flesh. So Jesus is our Word. So don't settle just for one. Um, try to get the complete, the complete message and search for it, seek for him. And um, you'll see, you'll start enjoying it and you won't be so picky about which translation you're in anymore. Okay, guys, let's go to Romans. It says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies dedicating 
all of yourself, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. So if we just take this verse apart a little bit, these verses, um, we should be presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. So you know when, <clears throat> when, um, when there was a sacrifice being made in the Old Testament, when you look at that, it was always unblemished lambs. It was pure. He didn't go and sacrifice um, a lame sheep or one with defects. It is very important to God that our living sacrifice, our sacrifice of our bodies is a holy one. So God says, be holy for I am holy. If we If we want to have an intimate relationship with God, we have to we have to be holy. If we want to go deeper, we have to be holy. We cannot be living and looking like the world and want to have an intimate relationship with God. Because He is so holy, if we go in unholy, it will it will destroy us. We need to be in the essence of who God is to be able to be in communion with Him. So it's important to dedicate yourself, set apart a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical and intelligent act of worship. So worship is not just about dancing and singing and uh, making a joyful noise. Worship is how we live our lives. It matters to God. It matters how you live. It matters what you look at. It matters what you eat. It matters what you listen to. It matters what you drink. Because what we take in, what we allow in, is what comes out. Says, and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed, progressively changed. So it's a process. You're not going to accept Christ today and then tomorrow you're going to be holy and everything's perfect. There's a process you're going through. It's a cleaning. Don't don't feel like um, when you give your life to God and you've repented for things and something goes wrong and you fall back into your sin. Don't then go into into self condemnation. Don't go into um, that place where the devil puts us in shame and guilt. Repent again. Repent. And ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen you. And also learn from when from when that fall came. Learn from when you when you made that mistake. See that because I went into that environment and my my spirit wasn't that strong. I couldn't stand against that temptation. So let me first fill myself with the right things, so that when I am in a situation where there is temptation, that I can overcome it with God. But don't go into guilt and shame. 
Once you have given your life to God, you are a new creation, which means old things have passed away, which means that old self of you don't exist anymore. God said, I will remember your sins no more. So don't live in your past. Don't live in your past. But if someone comes to accuse you of things in your past, after you've given your life to God, just remember that person is dead. That person has been crucified with Jesus. It does not exist anymore. So don't accept it. Say yes. That might have been who I was, or that was who I was. But it's not who I am anymore. This is where um, where the Bible says, confess your sins to one another. And you'll, in that, it's, it's so that the devil doesn't have a hold on you. You know, if you, don't have, if you don't have skeletons in the closet, then you can't be shamed by something that brings blood forward. If you are transparent, that's why our testimony is so important into this new life that we're going to go into. Because if you give your testimony, then it means you've overcome it. Because your shame is gone. And that is what God does, is He removes that shame from you. Because you, you have truly repented and you've changed your life and you know you have. Because you have gotten healing there. Then you can boldly go and you can say, I used to be that. This was my life. But I got saved. And that is how you can proclaim the gospel and your life is a picture of that change, of the fruits you are bearing now. And people that meet you will know that this is not the person that I met a year ago. There must be a continuous growing, a continuous change in who you are as you grow closer to God. You cannot be the same next year as what you were this year. You cannot be the same next month as what you are now. It's a growing and you have to get the right kind of food for this grow. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And the Bible says, he is the word made flesh. So we have to get the Bible. We have to get his word in us so that we can grow, so that he can renew us, so that he can strengthen us. But with our testimonies, with confessing our sins one to another, we become transparent. So the devil can't, in the worst possible situation, come and bring someone that knew, knew you when you were 10 years and you were living like a heathen. And you were living like that. And they can bring out and say, but I know you, you did this. And people that's there is going to say, but we already know that. This person has confessed their sins. And they've been transformed and they've been renewed. But if nobody knew that part of your life because you've keeping it hidden, you're going to look like a hypocrite. And the devil's going to shame you and possibly ruin your whole ministry or everything that God sent you here to do. So that, that part of the armor that is truth, that is the girdle, it's the belt. Now the girdle also covered the private parts. If your belt had to fall off, you, be, you get shamed. So to understand that truth in your walk with God, in your walk into holiness, is crucial. And you know what? Confessing your sins to one another also helps you. Because if you have said that you've overcome something, then you cannot go and do it again. It also helps with your discipline. It strengthens you. But truth is crucial. It's what keeps your whole armor together. It is what keeps you in God and it's what, what puts the devil on the side. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Truth. The devil cannot live in truth. Manipulation is there when the devil can bring something out of your past to shame you with. And God says you are now a new creation. You are born from above. You are not born from corruptible seed anymore. You are now born from the Holy Spirit. You are a new creation in Christ. And He will strengthen you. And that old self of yours, let it go. 
let it go. And if you're around people that constantly remind you of who you used to be, and they don't want to accept your change, let them go. Let them see a proper change in your life, and maybe, maybe they'll turn back and later on come and say, there's truth here. They were serious. They really meant it, and I can see the change in their lives. And like that, you end up saving some of your friends. So, he's saying progressively changed as you mature spiritually. So we'll see there's a working here. It's not just, it's not just your body. It's not just to starting to take care of what you look at and what you listen to. What you're allowing in. It is also your spirit maturing. And your spirit can only mature with spiritual food which is the bogle, which is worship, which is prayer, which is spending time with other fellow believers, which is reading books, godly books, from people that's also had their revelation. As I said in my previous te teaching is, we all know in part and we learn from each other and the Holy Spirit reveals different things to it. To all of us. So we learn together. But your spirit needs to grow. Just as, and that helps from in working out. Because it's Christ in you that starts bringing out the holiness. The righteousness is our outworking. But with our transformation, the more we get it, things of God inside of us, the more we will change. So I encourage you, don't look at the Bible, just another book. Read it every day. Every opportunity you get, never say you're too busy for God, because this, the thing is, God is the most important thing in your life, and should be. And if you don't have time for Him and you're too busy, you're never going to have time for Him, because you're always going to be too busy trying to to juggle everything in this world, all the stresses and everything. But God says, have your rest in me. Have your rest in me. Be at peace. Don't worry about tomorrow. And we can only find that place if we are in Him and we allow Him to be in us. And He's not going to get there. You're not going to get that peace if you don't do this. You have to make him part of your life. You cannot not read the word and expect your life to change. There's a spiritual transformation that has to take place. So you have to eat spirit. You have to read the Bible. You have to do communion. It says, you have no part of me. If you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part of me. Have communion with the Lord. Have quiet time. Worship him. And be thankful. Living a life of thankfulness changes everything. Because it's no longer it's no longer you. If you're thankful to God for everything, you will not take credit for anything. Which means you cannot go into pride. It keeps you humble. If you're thankful for who a person is, who the people is that you meet, you're thankful for, for something in their character. You, don't, you choose to see the good in people and you're thankful for them. If you live a life of thankfulness, it changes your perspective. So start every day with thanksgiving and praise and worship and you will see your life transforming. You will see your days changing because you have humbled yourself and the Lord will lift you up. And it says yet, as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, and then it says, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes. So that's the renewing of the mind, what you focus on so that you may prove for yourself 
what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in His plan and purpose for you. So even though all of this we do because we want to please God, we are ultimately doing it for ourselves. Because if we don't do this, we will never know what God's plan and purpose is for us. And isn't that what we all search for? Why am I here? What am I here to do? You know, but Jesus sent his disciples now. He says, go, make disciples. Baptize. Go, lay hands. Spread the gospel. Bring the kingdom. And I will be with you. His Holy Spirit is with us. But every one of us has been given a purpose. And we all have different talents. We all have different ways of fulfilling that purpose. But it comes down to one thing. Go out and make disciples. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Set the captives free. In other words, go and save souls. That is your purpose. To save souls. And you must just see where in your life and how God wants you to use it. In your workplace, in your family. On the streets where God wants you. You have to find that place and that place you're going to find when you're transformed. Spend time with God. Now even Paul, before he truly went into his ministry, he spent three years in the Arabian desert. Couldn't have been an easy time. But there was a time because you must remember he, his mind was so set on everything that he's learned in his culture, all the rules and laws, and he went from persecuting Christians and, and giving the yes for them to be stoned, to writing a third of the Gospel of Jesus. Now that is transformation. That is spending time with God to go from so far into something else. If you look at Peter, Simon Peter, and if you look at him, in the Gospels, and then you look at him after the Holy Spirit came. There's a, there's a total change. There's, there's a boldness that Peter's got. He went from denying that he was one of Christ's disciples to confessing Christ. And 3,000 people gave their lives to God from his confession. He was bold. He had no fear of death anymore. That is where we want to get. We don't want to care what people say, what people think, what our families think. If it's not in line with the word of God, we do not want it. Holiness is when it's okay for everybody else. But it's not okay for you. Be a set-apart person. Be transformed. Be renewed. Walk this journey. And the promises that God's got for you. Will come your breakthrough will come and as you start confessing the gospel and spreading it to others and you can see their lives change you're going to feel such a fullness that nothing in this world no amount of money no amount of friendship no amount of anything in this world can give you that same kind of satisfaction and joy as saving another soul and helping them to find christ and once you are there, you're going to get addicted to it. And imagine, imagine what our world can look like if we all do what God sent us here to do. Oh, it will be so good. <laughs> so really go and look at the scripture in Romans. Really look at it, because it's... Meditate on it. It's a renewal of your mind, it's a maturing of your spirit. So taking care of your body. I'm just going to read also 2 Corinthians 3.18. It says, And we all with unveiled face, 
continually seen as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to even more glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit, who is within you, progressively being transformed. There has to be transformation in your life. There has to be progressive change. So really, in your life, start listening to the Holy Spirit. Start listening to that feeling from, I know this is wrong. But now, um, I don't want to make the people feel uncomfortable, so I must sit and I must watch this. I must sit here and I must listen to this. Because you don't want to make people uncomfortable. Do you care what people think? Do you care what people think about you? Or do you care what God thinks about you? Are you self-conscious? Or are you God-conscious? Well, you have to start asking yourself these questions. Don't be a people pleaser. God loves you. And He will always be there for you, no matter what. People come and go. God is eternal. So really understand that what you put in is what comes out. So be careful what you look at. Start cleaning up what you're lying in. Your senses. The devil uses your senses. So really, really start taking a good look at it. See, my time is up for this morning. I went a bit longer than what I intended to. But I'm going to leave you with this two scriptures. I'm going to say just, just really start looking and really start reading. Behold, what you behold is what you become. We, we're supposed to look like Jesus. So let's read what Jesus wants to say to us so that we can be transformed. Holiness, the essence of holiness, is the ownership of God. And you were bought with a price with the precious blood of Jesus. You are the child of the Most High God. And don't you let anyone make you feel like you are anything less. So you'll be blessed. Let's just thank the Lord. Say thank you Lord for this time we could spend together. Thank you for working in our hearts, Lord, as we present ourselves to you, a living sacrifice. We ask you to go deep into our hearts and search us, Lord. Search us and remove all darkness from us. Continually wash us, Lord, with your water, with your word. Open things to us. Open our ears and our eyes. Give us a revelation, Lord. We wish to spend time with you. Please help us. We want to be with you. And we welcome you into our hearts. Thank you for strengthening us. Holy Spirit, thank you for going out before us today to open the ways and to show us more of what you want us to be and how do you want us to live. Thank you for all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Have a blessed day.